Last time we did this, I roasted some of the most popular IDEs, like VS Code, IntelliJ, e Eclipse, you know, the Avengers of programming environments, and somehow, you all survived. Some of you were offended, some of you were proud, a lot of you were both, but a dangerous number of you flooded the comments asking, what about code blocks? Or Notepad++ is all anyone needs, or even, no mention of regular Visual Studio is kind of heinous. Son, yeah, welcome to part two. Another one. It's time to roast more IDEs, I guess. Let's start with code blocks. The medieval torture device disguised as an IDE. If this is your daily driver, you're not just a programmer, you're a survivor. You don't use code blocks, you suffer through it. You've fought with include paths, you've wrestled with linker errors that make no sense in this universe or any parallel one. You've experienced the deep existential dread of trying to compile a basic hello world and ending up in a rabbit hole of compiler settings, forum posts from 2008, and unanswered stack overflow questions in broken English. The UI? It looks like someone ported Windows 95 into a science fair project, and yet, there's something poetic about it. If you're still using it in 2025, you either work at a university where time stopped in 2011, or you've developed a trauma bond so strong it should be studied in psychology textbooks. Oh, and I speak from experience because, ah, fun fact time, code blocks was my first IDE. Now let's move to Visual Studio. And no, not VS Code, I mean real Visual Studio. Full fat, enterprise grade, nuclear powered Microsoft Visual Studio. This isn't an IDE, it's a lifestyle. It's the type of software that demands a moment of silence every time you launch it. It's so powerful and bloated, it feels like if Microsoft Word decided to get a CS degree. If you use this, you're likely working on something terrifying, like firmware for medical devices, or a multi-million line C++ codebase that's older than your manager. This IDE can do everything. It can compile, refactor, debug, simulate, test, deploy, order your lunch, and probably raise your kids. But it also takes five minutes to open and might crash if you look at it wrong. You've got SSDs with nothing but Visual Studio cache files on them, and your project only builds properly when the moon is full and the Wi-Fi is turned off. But when it works, it works, and you know it. Now here's where it gets spicy, NeoVim. You don't use NeoVim unless you've already made a blood pact with the terminal. If you're on NeoVim, you're past the point of no return. You've written more Lua than actual business logic. Your setup is so personalized that even you don't understand it anymore. You've got plugins managing plugins, a status bar that looks like it's about to launch missiles, and split panes that rearrange themselves based on your blood pressure. You don't click things. You navigate using keyboard combos that sound like cheat codes like Control plus W or Control plus J, and my personal favorite, press escape five times to cancel the existential dread. But here's the thing, NeoVim users are efficient. You might take six weeks to configure it, but once it's ready, you're basically coding at the speed of light, while the rest of us are still waiting for our extensions to load. Respect. Let's shift gears to Zed. Zed is that new indie editor that shows up at the party wearing all black, claiming it's faster, smoother, and smarter than your current setup. I'm stronger, I'm smarter, I'm better. And it kind of is. Built in Rust, packed with performance and designed to be sleek, Zed is basically the editor version of a startup founder who drinks soy lattes and has opinions about Kubernetes. If you use Zed, you've probably got a dual monitor setup where one screen is code and the other is hacker news. You're not afraid to drop zero latency editing into casual conversations. You act like you found the holy grail, but deep down, you're still recovering from your last heartbreak, probably Adam. You want something fast, lightweight, and modern, but you're not ready to go full terminal monk. So Zed becomes your new identity, at least until the next Rust-based editor with a space-themed name drops on Product Hunt. Now let's get a little absurd. Pen and paper. If you're writing code with pen and paper in 2025, you're either in a final exam, a prison cell, or you've ascended to some kind of guru level of mental compiler simulation. Writing a function with a ballpoint pen is like performing brain surgery with a spoon. But you do it. You manually indent your code. You draw squiggly arrows for control flow. You whisper run and pretend it compiles in your head. You probably say things like, I only trust code I've handwritten and scare interns with stories of debugging without ChatGPT. And honestly, you're either completely out of your mind or you're the most disciplined coder alive. Either way, you should not be allowed near production code unsupervised. All right, jokes aside, let's bring it back to earth with Notepad++. This thing is the definition of if it ain't broke. Lightweight, snappy, and completely unbothered by trends. If you're using Notepad++, you've probably been in tech since the days when jQuery was considered modern. You open five files at once, edit a batch script, fix a config, and SSH into a server, all before lunch. You don't need themes or extensions. Pathetic. You have raw skill. 
you still believe in local files, manual backups, and staring at logs until the problem reveals itself out of fear. If something breaks, you don't panic. You open the any file and fix it. You are the old guard. The one-man IT army. The unsung hero of every office with a legacy app no one wants to touch. Enter Helix. Helix is what happens when you take the pain of Vim and the smugness of Rust and smash them together into a terminal-based fever dream. It's modal, minimal, and unapologetically opinionated. You don't customize Helix, you conform. It doesn't want you to install 47 plugins. It wants you to focus. It's like coding in a dojo, calm, clean, and deadly. If you use Helix, you probably have a .file GitHub repo, a readme that starts with, this is my way of doing things, and a disdain for anything that has a GUI. You believe that software should be elegant, efficient, and just a little bit painful. You're not here to mess around. You're here to master your craft, one modal keystroke at a time. Now let's talk about Kate. KDE's quiet, capable editor that nobody talks about because it's too normal. If you're on Linux and you use Kate, you're the most stable person in your team. You didn't chase NeoVim. You didn't hop onto Zed. You just wanted a nice, responsive editor with syntax highlighting, tabs, split panes, and zero drama. You update your system regularly, you write clean code, and you probably believe in work-life balance. Kate users don't yell in meetings. They quietly push high-quality code and go back to their latte. You're the person people go to when their VS code crashes. You don't brag, you deliver. And honestly, we need more of you. Yo, dudes, the Empire's pretty chill. Maybe you could, like, join it or something. And finally, Spider. The IDE of choice for data scientists, machine learning engineers, and people who willingly import matplotlib for fun. If you're using Spider, you live in a world of plots, arrays, and error messages so long they require horizontal scrolling. Spider feels like someone duct taped MATLAB to Python and then asked it to pretend it's an IDE. But for what it does, it works. You've got your variable explorer, your IPython console, and enough real estate to display 12 different scatter plots simultaneously. You're not building CRUD apps. You're analyzing crime statistics, running regressions, and debating whether standard deviation is a good feature. You don't debug, you analyze results. And every time your model accuracy goes up by 0.2%, you celebrate like it's New Year's Eve. And that's the list, for now. If your favorite IDE wasn't mentioned, relax. It's either already been roasted in part one, or it's coming in part three. Assuming I survive the Vim users hunting me down. Drop your IDE of choice in the comments, defend its honor, and let me know what I missed. I'll read every comment, take none of the advice, and probably end up back in VS Code anyway. And remember, it's not about what IDE you use. It's about your coding skills, which you can upgrade with Code Crafters. Their platform gives you access to unique projects that will help you stand out from the competition without the clown shoes and nose. Want to build an HTTP or DNS server from scratch? Check! Hell, you can even craft your own version of Git. All while others are still struggling to center that annoying div in their to-do app. You can start some projects free of charge, and if you use my link in the description, you can get yourself a whopping 40% off, so hurry up. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to share and subscribe to become a fellow codehead.